last episode with the agreed cams and showed you the exhaust system about the pairing because it's sequential and now we pull off the head assemble the valve train show you every detail and fully assemble the head to the block permanently isn't it funny that we started from showcasing all the brand new parts like pistons cam gears and bearings and valve train to this fully degreed and ready for final assembly shall we finish it let's go and while we're assembling the valve train to the head we will talk about something that isn't usually talked about usually they talk about the intake ports or the exhaust ports and that's good and all that we will talk about the chambers and what we did and why we do certain things so let's go <music> Here it is after removing the cam degreeing fixture. So we remove all the other stuff one by one. So let's go now. Here we're removing the belt and then the cam rails with the header first. Cam rails, we loosen it and then we just twirl it by hand. Okay, it's, we use a T handle for this. So it's just faster, you know? All right, there, okay. Now with the cams off, we take off the head studs. We just use six because the gasket is already used, so it's fine, All right? Now we use a long nose pliers just to pull the head stud because it's gonna give us a hard time if you don't, All right? There, All right? Here we are now with the finished block and those one up pistons. It's gonna be the last time we see this because when we finish the head, it's gonna go on it. Now let's go to the valve train. Before anything, we'll talk about the chambers on this cylinder head as we everyone always talks about the intakes and the exhaust ports. So let's get into detail about the small things that we do that actually helps quite a lot on performance. And shout out to Refuel Ride Race. The channel owner commented about the carburetor cleaner or choke cleaner that's always on my desk which is true um it's really useful when you gotta spray or clean certain bolts or dirty wrenches or bolts because it dries up real quick just make sure it's well ventilated because we don't want you inhaling those toxic fumes all right and you can click here for refuel ride races channel then let's show you more about the chambers Okay, now here we are. Let's double check. It's the valve is at full lift. So naturally at full lift, you want the most flow, right? And when you look at the size of the chamber, it's not really shrouded. So this is what makes a chamber quite efficient. See all around it on the sides. But when you think about it, mid lift and low lift are equally as important or even more so more important because when you think about it, as the valve opens, it passes by low lift and then mid lift before it reaches maximum lift but on the way down it passes by mid lift and low lift again so if you get the mid lift flow quite efficient oh that's quite excellent as you can see at mid lift it's still not that shrouded so removing tons of material on the sides of the chamber does not really help specifically the discharge coefficient because you know imagine imagine a nozzle if if you need, if you needed all the space you, you didn't have you wouldn't need an outlet right basically what i'm saying is the intake port imagine it as a nozzle it, it's feeding the chamber so the size of the chamber is actually like a diffuser right so without the diffuser we know it's not gonna flow well check this out as you can see on the exit of the nozzle it's shaped well and look it says it's a diffuser without it this is how it looks really pretty really disruptive right that definitely doesn't flow efficiently 
So you gotta look at the chambers as an extension of your intake ports, like this. Notice that after the 60, then 45, then 30 degrees, the chamber is actually an extension of the valve job here. This will help you visualize how you can improve flow. Here's another picture. As you can see, after the 30 de degree cut, if you remove it, it's not gonna flow really well because the discharge coefficient is not gonna be good. It's gonna start flowing or looking like this, which is not quite efficient, right? And if all this seems complicated, it's safer to leave the chambers stock and find power elsewhere. But word of notice, you have to practice awareness. Some shops or builders will compensate on running extremely high compression and then start melting pistons. And whereas with turbo, they, start, they would start to run extremely high boost and start smelting injectors or even spark plugs because they're compensating on, on what they cannot improve. You gotta know that. Okay, now I've bored you long enough. Let's get back to the program. And oh, I meant word of caution, not word of notice. She's Now going back to the chambers. As you can see here, the size of the chamber is shaped really well. And so, sorry for the shaky camera. And so, if you are not sure on how to shape this, leave it stock. You know, it's a lot safer than just ruining the whole efficiency. This place is actually an extension of the valve seat. Yeah. Oh, I can see the exhaust port looks really, really efficient right now. This is going to be so good. You see that? It's good, right? All right. Now let's head back to the SuperTech valve spring and retainer set. Let's check out how nice they are. Now on to the SuperTech SPRK H100DR valve train kit. This is the titanium retainers. They're actually really good, you know. And then here we're going to show you the springs. It seems like it's shiny or polished, but it's really bead blasted with steel bearings or steel beads. It's kind of like to stress relieve the spring upon manufacture or after manufacturing it, rendering it completely free from stress, you know? I'm sure other brand springs have their own ways or similar ways to make it perform better but this one hasn't failed us and actually we hope it won't ever fail us because we've been running it for more than 10,000 rpms with no problems so hey what ain't broke no need to fix right now we can assemble it all right, here we are putting the valve spring assembly to assembly tool together. You're gonna align it to the cam cap area, you know. And then we gotta put the bar and then find the right angle or direction, you know. So you gotta start checking before, you know, before we start to do the hard work. Right, so let's see first. It's adjustable, the handle, so it's, it's gonna be fine, you know? Right. Okay, now here we're finished with it. Now we're gonna show you something interesting. I know everyone's seen the springs or retainers rotating, even the valves, on certain videos online, right? As the valve spring open and close, it kind of rotates little by little. So here's an interesting thing that you can do you scribe a red marker or any color actually vertically from top to bottom on the retainer this way when you assemble it when it if it rotates or it, if it moves around you can check or and compare but of course you have to take a picture of it before you fully disassemble it with the cams like this you can see the lines and now we're gonna go to the exhaust to show you, I mean, yeah, to the exhaust to show you the rest. Okay, let's turn it, all right. 
as you can see the line right so imagine if the retainer and the spring rotates 45 degrees you would see the line is no longer vertical or at least front to back right and so it's it's not really that big of a deal but if you're building the engine and it's something that you want to check on or compare this is a fun tidbit to try and we've done this several times way way back so actually i'm just showing you how how we do uh, the marker so that you can visualize it if ever you disassemble it after you know there it's just easy so we're gonna show you now who's closer all right let's go close all right now here you can see you can see the red marker is vertical so if ever it turns like let's say even just 10 degrees you would see it right so what you can do is take a picture of it like this before installing and running it this way you can compare because if you don't it's hard to guess all right here we show you the p8r crv head gasket because you know we redrilled the dowel area just so it matches to a stock CRV head gasket, makes it easier for all of us. And there's the OEM P30 intake gasket, of course, because it's a B16 head, right? Anyways, let's go back to the block. Okay, now here we are: the ARP assembly lube or th thread lube. We have cleaned and washed the head stud, so it's clean. What we like to do is run each head stud to the threads of the block. This way, you get to lubricate the threads of the actual block. Because, you know, after washing it with solvent over and over, the threads in the block are quite dry. And this is when, when you're starting to torque the head or the head stud, and you start to hear screeching sound no matter if you put assembly lube or oil that's because you put assembly lube or erp lube on the threads of the head stud not the threads on the block so it's actually still inadequate and by doing this we tend to get to avoid such mishaps you know so we just run it hand tight all the way Till it's bottomed out and then we do each head studs with ARP lube this way we know every single thread has been passed with the ARP lube and you know it's a free bonus because now the torque is more clamping better you know okay we speed it up now because you know it's gonna take a while I like doing this by hand instead of using a ratchet handle or a T handle mainly because if you tighten it by hand you get to feel the threads if there's a like a let's say a small debris or a piece of sand you actually would feel it and you can back off and to continue further or clean it right all right now we got the last one Okay, now we loosen it and we actually put it back on the same cup that we use that has motor oil which is fine because it all already has ERP assembly lube or thread lube on the threads so it's gonna be okay okay now onto the block we use three bond for the areas that that's required in the through with the manual you know and we always get a small pack of three bond because the bigger one when you don't use it for a long time it gets stale and this one the smallest one we actually finished the vti and now we're finishing this b20 and it's still more than half that's a lot so here as per the manual we need to put three bond or honda bond on the oil drains you know to make sure you don't get unusual leaks and whatnot 
you know, and joking aside, real men use three bond, not copper spray. Actually, no, just kidding. We might offend other people, so let's not say that. Okay, so here we go. It takes practice to actually be able to apply a consistent thickness of three bond. And lots of dirty hands and wipe three bond on shirts and all that. So hey, we all go through that to get better. So here we are. The last two and then we'll be okay. Alright, wait. One more. Oh, it's not equal. Okay, there. Okay. And if you notice, these are the areas that even on the new rebuilt engine, sometimes you see oil seeping on these areas. That's because it needs Honda Bond. Well, at least the manual says so, you know. So, hey, let's just go by the factory. You can't go wrong with that. Right there. Wait just a little bit on the edge. There, there. Okay. Now we on to slap the gasket. Okay. Put the gasket. We're actually looking for the one dowel pin. Can't find it. Wait. Just to look for it. Okay. As you can see, it's going to be there. Now it's going to have the oil drains with three bond then we slap the head okay gonna look for the dowel all right there now it's hand tight so that you know it's settled in really well and then we go with the first step in a little bit okay hand tight all right now first step is 22 feet pounds of torque Right, so we get that on all the 10 head studs, right? And then we're gonna speed it up, so it's gonna be all. All right, now second step is 61 feet pounds of torque. That's the final one, all right? Oh, it's gonna be a lot. Uh, too much turn, so we're gonna speed it up for the rest of the head studs. This way, we got it good. All right, let's go. And then it's gonna be the final and last torque sequence, and then we're good. All right, now the engine is all closed up. Look at it. You can see the Viton valve seals. Oh yeah. And you know, it's funny, cause we started from this, showcasing all the parts, to this, degreeing it and prepping it, and then now it's fully assembled. We're still gonna finish off all the small details and the other things, so you know, you're gonna keep on watching and you can click here for more and subscribe, will ya?